Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because of this video, we are going to take a close look at the mini PC called the MP100 from KinHank. So where this is maybe one of the best, let's say, balance when it comes to value, what you're going to have for your money. And that's the reason I was really curious to check this one out. In my previous videos, I've shown you that you can build yourself an emulation beat with not a lot of money. You can get yourself an old school PC and you can just slap some bottles here on it. And that's actually what they're doing over here. But the difference is this is not ready to go kit or they basically assemble the hard drive and they're also going to have, let's say, a device including everything that you're going to need. But in this video, I just want to let's check out what we're having when it comes to the emulation performance and do a dedicated video when it comes to, let's say, gaming performance with Windows. So this is something you can just buy yourself or at least get yourself a mini PC and make it way cheaper. But I've noticed that this particular product was pretty good when it comes to the overall price and actually the overall performance. Because this is the 12th generation, if I'm saying it correctly, the N100. Nevertheless, this is a quite interesting, let's say, mini PC. And let's do a quick overview of it. So this is actually a mini PC that you can just buy separately, but what they included is already a controller. They're not going to get the buy top anymore. It seems like we're having the game share, the game share, yeah, the game share, the three wireless gaming controller. You know, let's do it like that. And that's what they're doing. They're just repacking everything. And the controller is an okay quality. I can already tell you that. It's way better than our previous videos where I always complained about the PlayStation 2 knockoff controllers. And yeah, take consideration. You can just grab your old, let's say, Xbox 360 controller, what I'm doing all of the time, and just play it like that. So the game here, 3T3. I never did a review about it, by the way. It comes with a dongle and a micro USB cable. Wow, that's retro already. So that fits this <laughs> that fits the profile perfectly. But the controller is similar to, let's say, the PlayStation 4. So the smaller package in here, we're going to find all of the accessories that we're normally getting with a device like this. This is just a plastic bag, nothing in it. An HDMI cable, we're having a, the mounting bracket for a, behind your monitor, and of course the power supply. We cannot boot it up without. But this is a 12 volt 3 amp, or in other words, this is a 36 watt power supply. The Intel Alder Lake N100 is a quad core CPU running on 3.4 GHz, having an Intel UHD GPU running on 750 MHz. The first storage is for Windows as an SSD, and the second storage is going to be just an old school 2.5 inch hard disk. And what I think is pretty damn cool, that we're having four connections at the front. One is only 3.0 and the other ones are 2.0. So what I already mentioned before is that this is actually just a mini PC that you can buy from AliExpress from other places. This is also called the N9N. That's actually how this mini PC is called. And what they're doing is slapping a hard drive in with Bodocera and putting a nice decal and giving you a controller, etc. But again, you can just all do this by yourself. There are a lot of different N100 devices out there that we're going to do a review here on the channel. So consider subscribing and hit a little bell. But what are we going to see with this particular product when it comes to the overall specifications? So first of all, we're going to have four controller ports or a USB port at the front. And I'm very pleased with this because this is something I'm always missing. They need to mess around with the USB cables and everything at the back. Then over here, the power on and off switch and then we're having a microphone in here and the headphone jack for a headphone. So at the left we even have the option to add ourselves a TF card or a micro Z card. At the back we're going to get an HDMI, DisplayPort 2, RG45 and input for the 12 volts power. And that's it. Nothing here and also nothing at the bottom. And here it says mini computer MP100. But again, there are all kinds of different versions out there when it comes to the N100. And I'm really looking forward to checking out all of them. But from the start off, I do have a mixed feeling with this. First of all, this thing doesn't come with Bottle installed. Nope, it comes with RetroBed. But how do you need to plug it in? Just your 12 volt adapter, your HDMI cable for the signal out for the display. And of course, you're needing this particular, let's say, dongle that you need to plug in. With Windows, you can say that it automatically needs to boot up programs. Over here, we're going to have the RetroBed shortcut. So that's the reason for the first time I'm going to need the mouse. Double click on it and it will automatically boot into the software. But let's take a close look at the software itself and what we're having here. 
So with this new chips, we have so much more power. The power that we're missing for a certain kind of platforms. And that is what I want to focus on. Think about N64, PlayStation Portable. There is basically all kinds of stuff that we can play with. Take consideration if you want to deep dive, you want to play some next generation, there we will find some problems because it's just still a low power chip. Then we need to have more power, but still I think it's a lot of capable of running. You know, the game box I've reviewed a gazillion times here on the channel that has so many freaking like options but still a lot of different problems. And a lot of those problems will be gone now. And that is what I'm most excited about today. So let's deep dive into some stuff and just check out how it will run. But let's start off with some old school gaming with the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. So this particular system runs perfectly. We could even play this on cheaper game boxes. So if you are into the retro stuff, particularly the really old stuff, and of course I'm pressing the wrong button again, then I think something like this is not something you should consider picking up because this runs great but you can play this on a $60 like game box nowadays. So that is something you need to take consideration. But beside that, it runs of course really damn great. Alright, so let's take a close look at some Sega Dreamcast. I have set the device to internal resolution of full HD or 920 and it did has a minor hiccup here and there. It has been set to no frame skipping whatsoever. I want to see how far we can push it. And I think full HD is absolutely how far we can push it with this. But I think it's pretty damn cool if you're looking at the game boxes where you're paying around 60 all the way up to $100. And you can always set this thing back to 720 or 480p if you want to. Also take note that Dead Alive is a game that is very demanding compared with other ones, so if you're having two dimensional games you have even maybe no stuttering at all. I am on a roll baby. Woo! So with really cheap game boxes we can barely play Sega Saturn. But now we can even play it on 720p internal resolution that makes this game look so much better. It is possible that some of the games will have a minor hiccup, depends on what kind of compatibility it is with the emulator and the game. And of course you can always tweak it per game. If you're saying, hey, I want to have 480p on this one and the game that is less demanding or better compatibility, you can also put it on 1080p and just tweak around with it. But later on I will maybe show you what and how you do this. But 720p and this particular game runs pretty damn great on this without any problem whatsoever. And I don't see any massive drops. But 1080p I've tried it, but I can tell you, oh man, that was not the experience you wanted to have. So one of the systems I really wanted to see running on cheaper devices is the N64. But so far with cheaper game boxes, it was not possible at all. But now with this particular game box, we have a very nice, let's say, quality overall performance. But we do have some minor hiccups when it comes to certain games. And there's where we're going to be needing some tweaking. That's the thing I found a little bit of a bummer with these devices, that they're just slapping something in together. They don't really check out what they're doing in my opinion. Like it's stuttering like crazy. So the next thing that we can do actually is rebooting this thing and going into the settings, pressing select. Here we can go into the advanced options and here we can mess around with the emulator. So for example, we have the Mupen 64 Plus next. We have the Parallel N64, Project 64. And here we can mess around with it, uh, hoping that we can actually find a good working emulator. So I'm just going to start with Parallel N64 and double check the video settings. Everything has been set to auto. Maybe they may be messing around with the auto settings, but nope, and everything seems to be working like it should be. And let's boot up again and let's see if it works now. And this is much better. I did see some minor glitching going on. Both editions have been mapped correctly and this game is great to play. Let's see which button I need to press or shoulder button. Ah, it's the left trigger button I needed to press. And I can just enjoy some old school golden eye without any massive hiccups. I have been playing this game a lot on different devices, on handhelds in particular. Oh man, it's always such a like, hassle. Okay, what's going on? Oh, I need to get used to the controls again. Right, let's go. I want to have the sniper. Oh. Nobody's home. What? Oh, there you are! <laughs> so out of the box, GameCube wasn't running that great. And the reason why, because they set it to 720p resolution, it still stutters now and then. But you needed to force it to use the Dolphin emulator and then putting it on just normal resolution. But still, the overall performance is very 
bad in my opinion because we do have these very annoying stutters. It can be, depending what kind of game you're actually playing differently, but another thing I also noticed that we're having a force feedback going on or rumble in the controller is another thing that doesn't always work with this. So the overall experience is not super bad, but again, depending on what kind of game you're actually playing. There we go, stuttering, stuttering. Uh, uh, uh. Man, that's really annoying. But it also implements for the GameCube. It's the same emulator, and I've noticed that it has the same struggles. A little bit unfortunate. Also take note, if you go to actually play some Wii games and you need the motion, that are the things you cannot do, so. There are a lot of cool games you can actually play with the Dolphin emulator. I'm just gonna be honest, if I want to play some Wii games, I'm mostly playing them on just original Wii or the Wii U. And the thing is we have some, let's say, tweaks going on sometimes with games that you can actually use a joystick beside the motion controls. That's absolutely great, but it's still a different experience. This is a great example. You can just press the buttons and manage to do the same thing but come on man this is not the experience you want to have there we go let's play a short part but the same overall experience you will get when it comes to the resident evil game Next up, let's take a closer look at the PlayStation part. This is something we can play on a lot of cheaper devices. Now, even on $69 or $99 device, but there is one particular thing I love about it. We can even upscale it now where we have a lot of problems or it was not possible at all. We can all the way upscale it for 1080p and it looks so much better now. And that is one of the things, the power of emulation in my opinion. But let's move on into the PlayStation 2 because I think it's pretty damn exciting that we're having cheap game boxes that can actually play PlayStation 2 nowadays. That's the thing I'm personally waiting for. PlayStation 2 is one of my favorite all-time systems. And yeah, when you're looking at the emulation power in combination with the performance, it's absolutely a very cool extra thing that we can play. But we did notice some issues with GameCube. I must say that I am very surprised how good PlayStation 2 runs and I'm very happy with it. And this is just an absolutely a great example how far it has become when it comes to cheaper mini PCs that can actually play or emulate a lot of things from back in the days. But of course we do have limitations. So first of all, PlayStation 3, the loading of the games are going to be significantly longer than your typical, like say more powered, let's say mini PC. And yeah, let's push this thing to the limit. But with PlayStation 3, I think here we're going to have the barrier where we cannot really emulate it perfectly. So when it comes to PlayStation 3, the loading times were so freaking long, but also if you're going to get into the games itself, here you will see that the overall gameplay is not perfect. It is very sluggish, and you can see that it doesn't even run on the full frames per second. And for PlayStation 3, we just need to have way more power than we're typically having. We do have some two-dimensional games that is, in the end, maybe possible to play. As they're already compiling shaders, we do see this more often with some other devices. But we're having the B-Link that I've tested out that costs like triple or quadruple the price of this device. Yeah, that is a way better overall performance. Alright, so get into some PlayStation Portable with a 1080p internal resolution. Take consideration the cheap game boxes couldn't even run this at all or at good speeds. And here we're going to force it all the way up to 1080p. And I think it's four times the resolution. And we do have some great overall performance. 
with some minor hiccups but overall it's pretty damn great in my opinion turbo mode come on I'm on that poor turbo mode yep yep there we go all right let's speed it up let's skip all the shenanigans and let's get into the fighting again well let's deep dive into some other retro stuff for example we're going to check out this very cool game called Return Fire, one of my all-time favorites that I actually played on the PlayStation back in the day. But why are we having cheap game boxes that can barely play this with the game boxes like this? We can actually play it pretty damn well. And that is one of the things I love it, that we can finally play a lot of retro game systems we have having so many issues with. With the best outro ever. Oh, we don't have the skull saying, <laughs> no it doesn't have, oh man, that's a bummer. Boo hoo! But of course, if you want to check out some arcade, that is no problem whatsoever. This runs pretty damn great. I really hate this freaking cheap ass computer. Freeze! Why don't you want to freeze? Thank you. And just punch him in the balls. That's the way how Mortal Kombat works. But take consideration if you just want to play some old school games, that the cheaper game boxes are just fine for that. I think you need to look into a device like this if you want to play some PlayStation Portable and if you want to have a higher resolution upscaling with the PlayStation 1. The cheap stuff runs pretty damn great on this, no problem whatsoever. Here I have no limitations whatsoever when it comes to this, it's absolutely great. Well, let's move on to some Sega Naomi arcade gaming with some Power Stone 2, one of my favorite games I've played so much on the Sega Dreamcast. And this just is a great game to experience and it runs perfectly on a device like this. And I'm always getting my ass whooped by these guys. The unfortunate thing is that we don't have the analog stick enabled, so that's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. But besides that, it runs pretty damn great. Another new addition to the devices is Mugen. So Mugen was back in the day an engine where you can create your own fighting game. And you can make the most crazy things ever. For example here. We're having this game that has a gazillion different kind of characters from all of, let's say, different, like say, games. Homer Simpson, you name it, some custom characters, even like Evil Sagat. Give an example how this will actually work out. You can do tag team against one, stuff like this. It's absolutely nuts. I love this craziness. And Mugen is a system that I've played so much with. I've created so many games back in the day, messing around, finding new characters, where people dedicated making these super humanoids, like Sagat characters, with crazy like power-ups. And I'm getting at this point completely like messed up. Okay, so let's move on to some Atomus Wave, because this is a system I really enjoy. But unfortunately, with cheaper game boxes, we always have problems, because these chips are not powerful enough. But with a mini PC like this, we have no problem whatsoever. Say hello to my little friend, the yes, yes. <laughs> Riding the Dolphin. I love these Metal Slug clones, or that's actually how it feels for me. So where most of these, let's say, very expensive, like mini pieces are made out of, let's say, very nice material in combination with metal or aluminium, this is more like a plastic, fantastic, cheap case. But yeah, for the money, I think we cannot really complain. So first of all, in here, we're going to find ourselves the hard drive. And the hard drive itself is going to be purely used for the RetroBot configuration. Oh yeah, it seems to be they can even buy these hard drives through a USB connection and plug it in. So take consideration, if you're going to slap this hard drive on a more powerful device, you can actually just use, for example, way better overall performance with GameCube, Wii and PlayStation 3. When it comes to this hard drive, not every single screw have been put in there. So first of all, we have an option to put in four screws for the hard drive, there are only two of them in here. So let's slowly remove this. This storage capacity is the NVMe, and they also implemented an extra <laughs> the screw. On here. Oh, don't need the screw, but there is this um, extra cooling element on here. So that's great that they absolutely did this. But this is actually where Windows will be put on, and that's it. And in this part, we're finding the battery for the main board and it's kind of interesting that we can unplug it it's very cool that this hasn't been soldered whatsoever onto the main board but let's remove the hard drive and let's get this show further on the road i'm guessing that 
I get terrorized by the freaking shoes. But when you're looking at this, I am not going to remove this because I'm guessing these are for the CPU cooler. So I think it's not going to be very smart to remove those. So one of the other things I just wanted to check out how they assembled the NVMe on this because, oh man, I don't know what I'm looking at, but it's very strangely looking. And particularly when you're looking at the way how they assembled the cooling. They completely went nuts or something. Oh, and this, this, oh man, they're having double-sided tape on the, over this. And there's the thermal pad. It's very, like a scimitar. Still, go away with your screw. But the thing is, yeah, you, there's no way of uh, disassemble this and just get it back in the original condition. But when it comes to the Wi-Fi chip over here, this will be placed. You can also be finding the antennas number one and number two. They are basically placed at the same location over here next to each other. I don't know if this is going to be in, in positive or negative thing, to be honest. But that's one of the things you can find in here. The Kinhank Mini comes with some huge surprises. So first of all, I love this chipset simply because it's a very fast chipset and you're not paying a lot of money for it. This deal overall is not bad at all. If you're going to be combining this with an own hard drive, of course, and a mini PC, you're going to be way cheaper out. You can just grab, let's say, some random controller, maybe you have laying around and connect this with your, let's say, device. So another thing is that we don't have buttons here at this time. We're having the RetroBot software windows. Nevertheless, I think it's a pretty damn cool piece of equipment. Yeah, there's has so much potential here, but it also comes with some limitation I've seen in this video. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments um, what do you think of it. And if you have any questions, let me know. It would be great to see you in the next video.